Hello and welcome to Friday Night Fright Presents Comic Book Calvacadia 2020. Man, we're going to have some fun this month. Every episode in May, every day in May, there's going to be a brand new episode. It's going to be a mini review of a comic book movie. Yay, can't wait, hyped. So it's going to cover the gauntlet. It's going to be loads of MCU stuff. There's going to be some DC stuff probably. Uh, it might be some other stuff. There's going to be Flash recaps of Flash Season 2 every Tuesday. Um, so it's going to be four or five of those, depending on how many Tuesdays are in May. But it's going to be tight, because I've also got a week off. Yay! Anyway, this is the intro comic for Cavcadia. So you hear this every day of the week, and then you'll hear an intro for the movie and I'm covering that day. Or TV show. Ooh, scary! Anyway, I'll be back after a brief word from our sponsor. Hey guys, if it's okay, I'm going to skip the intro today, because I have enough engines. this. So, Captain America Civil War is a big movie for Marvel Cinematic Universe. In fact, it's the first movie after a bit of tension in Avengers Age Ultron, which pits the heroes at locates with each other and conforms to one of the key tropes of superhero comic books in America. Uh, particularly America is not... And that heroes will fight each other because heroes fight each other gives people... The memories and feelings and nostalgia they have kids when they're smashing action figures together. I mean, Christ, I'm 35 and I used to do smash wrestling action figures together. So I'm somewhat target audience this movie. And at the time, yeah, I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of Captain America Civil War at the time. And my main issue with it back then was I didn't particularly like it because I thought Captain America First Avenger and Captain America Winter Soldier were two really good movies and it building up to a really cool finale. And this was a big, mad Marvel plotbuster. So at the time I was a bit annoyed because I really wanted to focus ca- conclusion Captain America story arc because I didn't obviously realise that Marvel were playing long game and they wanted to build story arcs right up to Avengers 4. So in retrospect, Marvel made the right call, but at the time I was a bit annoyed. And what do I think rewatching it back? Well, for transparency reasons, I watched this about 10 days ago. I didn't watch it today. I didn't have time. I'm knackered from work. So I'm just going by what I remember from watching it a few weeks ago. And in, in trying to add some sort of context to it, I, I like I like Camp America Civil War more now. I don't know if I'd say it's great per se, but it's um a decent movie. It's good um good acting, good action. Great action in some cases. And generally I think it's a good before foreshadowing from Marvel Bank Universe as a whole. But mainly, 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 it's better than comic book. I don't know if many of you have read Mark Miller's Civil War comic book. It's a glorious mess, and I love it, but it's the least adaptable thing into a movie you've ever seen. You have to gut that comic and take the central idea of Captain America and Tony Stark at Lockheads for it to make any sense. This movie does a better job of portraying Captain America and Iron Man it's sort of an even kill because you can understand Tony Stark's motivations even if he's a bit of a dick and you can understand Captain America's motivations even if again he's a bit of a dick because they correlate throughout the movies that they're in Tony Stark's obviously seeing a lot of messed up stuff and he was the one who was on trial of sorts backing Iron Man 2 when he said that he was basically privatised his privatising with peace, and it's brought back down to earth, so you can understand why maybe he's a bit reluctant to um, be against these regulations, and Captain America is the flip side, because his entire movie has told him that despite the fact he's a soldier, he will go against orders when, when he has to. In a long way, they introduced a lot of Marvel characters to it, and it's really, really well made. I mean, I think the biggest thing you say about Captain America Civil War is it's a really well made movie, very well constructed, and ways it dwarfed from a Captain America sequel to a Avengers sequel of sorts is really impressive. Much like Captain America Winter Soldier technically was Avengers 1.5, this technically is Avengers 2.5. And it does a good job of that. And there's some great action sequences. What will I say criticism for the movie are? Um, well, for starters, it's not really Captain America 3. No, Iron Man 3 paid off, was a bit dull, but paid off Tony's story arc. I can imagine 
any future trilogy movies do the same. This seems like it's setting scene for more movies. It is a lot about Captain America and somewhat about Bucky and somewhat about Iron Man. And everyone gets a little story arc, which is a good sign for things to come. But at the same time, it doesn't really feel like a Captain America movie. The idea I had, and I know that sounds terrible, because I don't want armchair quarterback, I think they could have made a really, really effective Captain America movie with... Captain America and Black Panther both try and track down Bucky and the conflict that exists between them and a sort of heat thing of, you know, if you get in my way, I'll stop you and I'll stop you too. That could have been cool, but that's not a movie they wanted to make. And indeed, this is science Marvel, Marvel's growing ambition because this is basically F1 in it and it's non Avengers movie and they got Captain America movie to a billion dollars at the box office. So Marvel's clearly doing something right. I think the own, the other downside movie is that while they try and keep Tony and Captain on a to Iron Man, Captain America on an even kill, I have to for Captain America. The movie doesn't want you to think about how Marvel you've seen that universe has had government structures taking over these. Hydra and Trade Shield, aiming for Trade the White House, just in the last two movies. So. The problem is that they're trying to come up with an idea of a camp beer team, things like that, but it doesn't work because fundamentally superheroes need to be right, and they might not be right in this movie, but they are overall. The movie tries to go around that by point have Captain America and Iron Man point out that it doesn't matter who's right, you know, if you know people can be right for the wrong reasons and wrong for the right reasons. As it's ever flowing this movie, both Captain America and Tony Stark have extreme reactions to the Sokovia Accords that clash quite strongly because essentially they are very proud individuals who've both had their own success and their own failures and they don't really want to play second fiddle. Despite them coming closer, friends, there's still tension between them as it's emphasized in Avengers Age of Ultron in the log cutting scene. And Captain America and Tony Stark clearly have some issues with each other. But also strong love between them. Because Captain America really... He doesn't necessarily understand Tony. Because he worked with Howard and has a lot different than Tony. And Tony doesn't understand Cap. Because he didn't obviously come through the Second World War. So he wouldn't know much about that. So yeah, the way it gives F1 action sequence. And F1 bit of time shine. And a few story arcs here and there. It's very cool. But again, it's really set up for future movies more than anything. So I think, I would say, I, I'd go for, in terms of scale, 4 out of 5. I mean, what they're trying is ridiculous. But in terms of execution, probably 3.5 out of 5. I I think they waste um, Daniel Brewer's Baron Zemo. He doesn't really get that much to work with. I don't necessarily think it's the best movie it could have been. It could have been a bit more compact. Um, and while the airport fight is great, the rest of the movie continues with a more standard era Captain America sequel. And also the idea of the five other Winter Soldiers isn't really explored at all. It's just the red hairy more than anything. So yeah, very good, very watchable when I watched it, but not necessarily the best of Marvel Cinematic Universe. But... Uh, uh, face between this and Ant Man, it's got a pretty decent batting ratio so far. Um, two 3.5 out of 5 movies, so that's a good sign. And anyway, I'll be back tomorrow with, um, shit, I don't know what's up. Doctor Strange, is that next? I don't know, but I'll be watching that li- live ish and I'll be commenting on that next day. Oh, by the way, my Ant Man review hasn't done very well, even worse than the usual ones because people want horror, I guess. That's my thing, and I'm ignoring it. But yeah, so uh, that do to combine the box office success or failure of Ant Man doesn't speak much for Ant Man's fan base out there. But that's neither here nor there. My name's Ian Austin, and as always, remember life is beautiful. <laughs>